uh, going to call to order the meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board of January 13th, 2014, which is scary in and of itself. So, um, got a pretty full agenda, but I think we can move through it uh, fairly quickly. Um, the first item on the agenda is the review of the Arlington 360 status of conditions. Um, as we talked about at the last uh, meeting of the board uh, in December, um, we had worked with uh, Foley HOAG on uh, coming up with a matrix of the different requirements in each of the special permit and the LDA. Um, and what you have in front of you is that matrix now filled in quite a bit more with uh, the great help of uh, Laura and Carol on going through uh, the different items. It's, there are still some, you'll see in here it says open, and that could be that the item is open or we're still talking to the folks to get to the bottom of, of whether something is done or not. So, um, so it can have a couple uh, relevant uh, um, meanings to it. So, so with that, um, I thought maybe what we would do is pick up the um, special permit requirements first. And once again, we're looking at the one with a rather lengthy um, statement under A1, if uh, everyone's looking at the same one. Okay, great. Yep, perfect. Um, so on the special uh, permit requirements, the first thing you're going to see is um, with respect to just some general conditions, all utilities shall be underground. Um, and I don't know how much we have to go through each one of them. Um, how do people have questions or comments along the way that maybe what we can do is we can go through the different ones that are still seen as being open? Jake, don't worry. Um, I'm going to interrupt for one second. Jake, what we're working off of here are a couple of these matrices over here. So you can have them. Um, yeah, sure. Sure. So why don't you introduce yourself so we can get it for the record? Jake Upton, uh, Hospital Road. <laughs> <laughs> Sims, yeah, exactly, exactly. Why not? So, Jake, why don't we have you sit there? Because what we're gonna, do, what we're doing really is just kind of going through what I had mentioned to the board is that staff and Carol um, had worked their way through, and, and I did as well, to work our way through the different status of the descriptions of the different uh, uh, permit requirements. Um, you know. He, feel free to talk about them as we go through them. Or actually, maybe what's better is if we've got questions, we'll, we'll ask them sure. of you. Um, but, um, but from our perspective, where we'd like to be is we're just going to go through them. I don't envision us taking any votes tonight on any completions or anything else. It's just to kind of get a status of where we are. At the next meeting, there's if we can make our way through the list, maybe there, it'll be time. Maybe it'll be right for a vote. So, but, um, but anyway, so that's my probably on there, so. Um, you can see there are several different um, general uh, descriptions of, of requirements and special conditions. Owner responsible for installed landscaping. Uh, upon issuance of building permits, applicants shall file contact information, some general ones. There is one with respect to utility work with town right of way shall be done in accordance with town bylaws and MPP. This is open only because what we need to do is we need to um, get together with a uh, designated town representative, uh, understand uh, his conversations uh, with the uh, redeveloper, and understand that um, they're in some agreement or what have you, and we're not there yet. I think those discussions are on go. So um, that's where we are on that particular one. Um, the next one is with respect to, any questions on any of the first few? I do have one yeah, question. Yeah, please. Um, Just pipe up because otherwise I'm going to go on through. Yeah, we can pipe up maybe page by page. Yep. Uh, owner responsible for installed landscaping, of course I'm going to ask on that one. Is everything done on the landscaping? It says met, you know, but okay, I'm not sure so, everything's done. So, there's, so I think 
the reason it says met is because the owner has taken responsibility for the landscaping okay. as a whole. I mm -hmm. think if you look under, I think it's the land disposition agreement, it gets more specific with respect to the buffer. For tree replacement. Tree replacement. But what about like the plantings and the parks? Is and that under this thing? Yeah. Yeah. So if I could just pop in and mm -hmm. answer that. Um, the majority of the landscaping is installed. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, um, just as an owner, um, we're in that period where we have retainage um, on the landscaper. Some of the plantings come in a little bit late in the season. Um, we do not have a full um, stand of grass um, on most of the project, although we own, we own that in our contract. So um, while everything's been done, we are anticipating a punch list process um, that'll be um, very much scrutinized in the spring when we're back into a planting season and we can get things to kind of come through and see what's alive. Was everything even seeded? That's what I was yes. concerned about was the slope seeding. Slope seeding is all get done. done. Yep. Now whether we grew <laughs> adequately, we, we do anticipate yeah. there's going to be a lot of um, you know, potentially some reloaming and some reseeding that would be happening on the landscape, mm -hmm. particularly on the slope zones. Um, and there's some some brush to some of the um, the softscape. We just want to monitor, make sure it makes it through the winter. And everything. Is the town responsible for checking the landscaping? Well, uh, I mean, for the, for the plans. Yeah, I mean, pursuant to the plans, it, it would be, I guess for the certificate of completion, we'll mm. we'll need to understand the landscaping aspect. So who, who's going through and actually checking it, and is that necessary? We have not designated anyone yet who would do the site mm. inspection. Yeah. Are you volunteer? <laughs> I can. I'm just, just wondering, qualified. like, if if I'm not, you know, I wasn't involved when the original landscape plans were done, but I'm wondering, is if that a requirement, go, actually? I, I'd go it if you wanted to go with me. That's what I meant. Yeah. I mean, I'd You're more... I mean, it would take a long time to check that all the trees, like that if, yeah, would, if there were supposed to be 400 trees put in that were a certain size, we should kind of check off that maybe they were done. And we're not missing 50, you know, one or two. So yeah, we're yeah. missing a whole group of something. No, 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 you'll find that. No, I doubt we are. It's all, it's yeah. all been, you know, very much. We can walk you through it and, and I think get comfortable with the landscape. Plan. We've had uh, Mike Radner do his punch list, so we can mm -hmm. share that information. Um, and he's certified. And signing off yeah. for position, so we have all of the sort of paperwork for that. And I'm sure um, there's been minor I think, changes. I think that right? it would be, uh, you know, there have been a little bit, but not a lot. Um, I think it's pretty consistent with the plans. We've okay. been trying to be very, you know, faithful to the plans. Um, where there is, there are changes are mostly where additional planting has been added mm. um, because of either qualitatively just want us wanting to have a better presentation mm -hmm. uh, for our own internal marketing reasons. Um, but also, there was the enhanced planting plan for the buffer zone, and there was a lot of plans added for that. So right. um, we think that that'll all sort of, and I think that um, some of the grade, as the as built information on the grades for the Vista Park, the lower Vista Park in particular, I think all of that information has been shared, and, and you know, there really shouldn't be any surprises at this point. Right. But, um, and some I, of that I've what seen. What I would recommend that we do to, to, to close the loop is to do a walk and a plan review with Mike Radner, um, with whoever um, I, I would anticipate it being, uh, Carol, but and whoever else. On, we could um, wait until the spring. spring. You know, the timing's okay. going to be important because we want to go when we can see as much as possible, Probably as easily spring. as it's possible. Good, it's a good week to do it this week, <laughs> yeah. to see what's That's not being covered. Um, <laughs> and this is not this is just to determine what's been planted, yes. not that it's survived. Yes, right. it's not the survival. Right. It's right. That would be another, yeah. that would be something else. It's, for timing wise, when does that have to be checked off? The earlier well, the better. Well, uh, yeah, the earlier the better because as we kind of get through all of these things, what we're really trying to do here is pretty much check all the boxes yeah. to the extent. So, mm -hmm. so one of the things as part of the building permit process and closing out the building permit, there are affidavits that are signed by um, the consultants that are reviewing the contractor's work. And um, so for instance, the plumbing, um, the um, the civil engineer signs affidavits that the infrastructure that was in place right. has all been done. Um, I believe that Mike Ratner is signing an affidavit that the landscaping is done. Oh, he is? Okay. So okay. It, it, it should be very cut and dry. <laughs> but well, we if that's being done, review. then maybe it's not that. I, I would suggest just for familiarity of it mm -hmm. that, you know, as part of the process, that we submit that information. But I, I think it's worth doing a walkthrough um, and just seeing you know, what's mm -hmm. been done. Yeah, that'd be great. Because it's the parks and it's the open space, and there's 
um, you know, there's a lot of information there. There is a lot, yeah. The landscaping requirement goes beyond the completion of the parks. Uh, that's part of landscaping, but we're also talking about the areas in between the buildings. And that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's the yeah. whole site. Right, yeah. right. And as you know, there's there's man, uh, management standards. It's part of the management plan for the thing for the parks, but but that doesn't necessarily cover specifically the on-site plantings. So so it's good to review. And, um, I think we'll have the, we're in the process of getting those affidavits now, um, and so I think we can just pick a, a nice warm <laughs> sunny warm day that we can get. But actually, mm -hmm. tomorrow's supposed to rain, but the end of the week's supposed to be Friday. I'd be fair, fairly fairly warm and stuff. So you know we can just yeah. I don't know what Carol's schedule is. I can't do Friday, but if, it's if you can do it, I'd, that would be great, Christine. That'd okay. be good because then the affidavit will have more meaning to you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, because I think in the end, when we get that paperwork, it does make sense to. Yeah, I feel like somebody paper. should be familiar with it yeah. since I'm the most qualified okay. possible nope. for that work. I can help with that. That sounds great. Okay, so maybe Friday morning. Sure. Yeah, and just to just to be clear, as we kind of go through this, like I said, this is a draft. I mean, this is a working mm -hmm. doc. The, the whole notion of this is to be a working document. So, for example, on this one where it says met, we're going to talk about walk through with affidavit, you know, and um, additionally affidavit eventually. So, so anyway, so so that one's a little bit different than what's in there right now. So. Okay. Okay. Anything else before we move down to A one? Okay, A1 comes from uh, Laura's uh, memo of um, January 8th. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one here. Um, that's, uh, oh, of course I had, I had it. That's right, yeah. it's it, it, January 8th. It is the 8th, okay, I, I was actually looking at the one yeah, for it's, CBS. It's condition five, so. and then it, it's just the breakout of such conditions to condition five. Right, exactly. Um, so, these are the subconditions. The first one is with respect to the uh, intersection to include a signal at Hospital Road. Obviously, there is a signal there right now. Um, there is some um, toing and froing right now between the uh, town engineer and the and Arlington 360 with respect to some of the um, uh, with respect to some of the um, triggers uh, for the signal. Um, frankly. That's kind of in open because the staff and town engineer are still talking to them about what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, from our perspective, there is a signal there. We need to just try to figure out whether everyone's going to sign off on that. So, if the if the uh, loop detector is damaged, do you have to tear up paving to get to that? It's under the paving, right? E I think the what is actually wrong with it and everything else is that I think it's probably a matter of debate. I'm not sure we're going to get the answers here. I'm just wondering if the if the fix would happen in the spring versus now, anyways. Uh, it's unclear. I mean, it, it is operable now, and it was um, it was updated before we just did our traffic counts on this little study that we've been doing. So we just need to go through this with the time here. We just got the memo mm -hmm. on Thursday or Friday. So okay. um, there were a couple things that make perfect sense, and there's a couple things we just had questions about. Um, so you know, just one of the things that we're trying to close the loop on. Okay. A2 is the um, optimiza uh, optimization of the signal timings for Summer Mill Carter Hill intersection. Um, that study, uh, we moved forward, as you might recall, that was the one that had the escrow for after the fact. <laughs> we, and everybody in town seemed like it was a very good idea to move it up. Why don't you give us an update on yep, where so the survey is? The study is? has been done. Um, it's been distributed. Um, it's going to the TAC. There's a, um, a follow-up meeting, I think, on the 23rd. Um, in the evening with the TAC to review the findings. Um, having seen the draft findings, um, it's clear that there's some re-timing sequencing that can be done between the lights and within the lights uh, cycles that will dramatically improve um, what the flow is and optimize the efficiency of those, those intersections. Um, as part of that, we were asked to take a look at sort of future planning for the intersections of what could be done as a next, if there were bigger problems down the road. Um, and um, so we have done that. There is a, um, if there are some considerations, we believe that it's sort of outside the scope of what the intersection is now and making it work. If 
the town wants to consider closing certain right turn, you know, not allowing certain turning uh, functionality that currently exists, there are some things that could potentially be done um, to make it even better down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but the report said, the memo just said that they thought it was clearly outside of the scope of what this project was defined as, and there would have to be further study on it. But it was, it's, I think, a helpful piece of information for future planning of the TAC. So, Carol, I think with respect to this one, we'll be taking our um, view of this from the TAC mm -hmm. and making sure that, you know, at some point we just get word back from them where they see this and whether it's completed so that we feel like we've gotten what we need to in moving this um, closer than, than the after the fact uh, $40,000 escrow. So. Um, does that sound about right to everybody or any other questions or concerns? So just to, I'm sorry, yeah. to make sure I got it. Um, TAC is going to finalize its recommendations by the end of January, we think. I is think the plan. that I think that is the plan. Um, and it may be premature to ask and be on, you know, what anybody at this table knows, but is the idea to get that light in sync with the ones at Hospital Road? Or Sims Road. Yeah, it's it's the Mill Street, um, Summer Street intersection, yep. as well as the Brattle Sims. There's a couple other smart right. streets that right. come in, but but yeah, getting those two intersections to, to jive and to function well just within their own intersections, and yeah. to be timed with mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. for for overall flow. Okay. And you know, it, it looks like it's pretty straightforward of what needs to be done. There's some restriping that I think we acknowledge is something that we can just go ahead and do. And um, and then most of the repro we can provide the formulas, but I think it's the town engineer needs to actually have them programmed into the lights uh, because it's their jurisdiction to do that. And my other question, and this also applies, I guess, to eight three, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, are these tied to? It, it, it would it would seem that you're probably going to be looking to get certificates of occupancy bef before some of that work is done, or not? Um, I think that we would, um, at the very least, be able to include as a performance bond kind of scope that it, that it would be done, if not have it done. I think that we would like to just, it, it shouldn't take very long to do these things. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're trying to get agreement with the TAC and then get everything in motion that we can. Right. And what isn't done by the sort of what's when we get the final a certificate of approval, a certificate of occupancy, um, what's not done, we're hoping to have it all done, but we certainly can provide a bond to guarantee that that scope of work will happen yeah. and we attach it to a, a contract of some sort. Because it would seem like the, the major task is, is figuring awesome. out the synchronization of the lights yeah, and, and the pavement markings is right. kind of the, the, the tail end of that. Right. Okay. Yeah, and that's just, I'm sure it's a certain temperature you need or what have you, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so similarly, like you said, in A3, mm -hmm. I think we're talking about the same things. Um, uh, the refuge islands are done, I went by them the other day. Uh, and then, um, but we will have to wait on the uh, actual striping. Yeah, so, so this does touch on another sort of more macro component to this is the there is a performance bond that was placed right. at, at the original closing. Um, I think the board voted a, a while ago to reconsider that in the, I can't remember, the, it was the spring time frame up to where we are and what needs to be sort of, you know, if that amount needs to be adjusted downward or upward. Um, I think we would be sort of making an inventory of the things that would be happening in the spring that just can't happen. Mm -hmm. Like the, there's some re there's some striping that's been done, but there's a certain type of stripe that you need to have, but you have to have a certain temperature outside yeah. to do yeah. those types of things. And we just have an inventory that would sort of run parallel with all of these things. Okay. Good. Um, anything else? A4 is the uh, right term pocket. So is that, it says done, does that mean that we've decided that there should be a right turn pocket or um, is that? It's able to be added later okay. if necessary. Okay. So the preparation is done. The, the three inch diameter conduit's in. Yes.
respect to the, the different uh, subgroupings under C. Uh, first one, um, the, it appears that the fire chief uh, requested uh, that this not be done. The curb extensions are done. Uh, the traffic calming device on Oak Hill um, is no longer required. C4, you um, install the stop sign on Woodside Lane at Oak Hill Drive. That actually was just done. But just done? Yeah, okay. But there's some striping, a stock bar that needs to be going in. Okay, stock bar. Okay. Supposed to go in today, it might be. Okay, so there. certainly by the end. So maybe you can update us on, yep, that, on that process. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, curb extensions. Um, I think this is probably before my time, but uh, it appears from a report of the town engineer and a meeting with the butters that this uh, was taken off the table on C5. Uh, yeah, I remember that um, the neighbor's uh, feedback was that they did not want either the curb extensions or the sidewalks on some of those yeah, streets. So those, so those were contingent on a butter approval. Right. right. Butter no, absolutely. Approval. So, yeah. So, that should be good. Um, now, moving on to the D, uh, pedestrians and bicycles. Uh, sidewalk, entire length of uh, hospital, road, now Sims Way. Um, Sidewalk within the Summer Street uh, right of way. That's done. Crosswalk on Hospital Road. Done. Um, crosswalk be provided at Summer Brattle Hemlock intersection. I assume we did we not only make the recommendation, but is that actually been done? Yes, that was recommended to Mass Highway as part of their realignment work that the, and it was done. It was actually done as part of that, yeah. Great. Uh, sidewalk on the hospital side of Woodside Lane, uh, not needed, no butter consensus. And then uh, D6, we have got an actual done on the install uh, sidewalks up at York, so wasn't that one of the ones that you were, uh, was that your, your, your telephone pull among other things? Um, yeah. I've seen a lot of things to go through Congress this month, too. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're on a roll, that's that's your yeah, you're on a roll, something must yeah. be aligning yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Uh, public transportation. Actually, there's some good stuff under E. Um, obviously, I don't think they E1 is simply that they won't discourage. I guess it's done to date is probably the best way to put that. Mm -hmm. um, E2, actually, is pretty exciting with the bus service uh, returning to the site on April 1st. Actually, was it March or is it April? Somewhere around there. So. We, are, um, we are trying to start the um, by the end of March, so I think we put April first. Just April to make sure, um, not to have it be April Fool's Day, I think. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we we the struggle there is uh, is being able to prepare the um, the found, there's a, a sidewalk extension and a platform that's done. It's just a concrete pad um, that extends the sidewalk right at the uh, Vista Park entrance, um, and we need to thaw the ground and. Have some temperatures for conducive for pouring concrete, so we were rushing to get that done, um, and we weren't able to do it. So we're hopeful that we can do it by April first. So we think we should be able to do that, but we're just going to try to find a window of weather that it makes sense to do that. Okay, great. So we shouldn't probably call that done, or should we? Um, well, I think if you're no, but the way it's phrased, yeah, the, way it, the owner exactly. of the successor shall not take any action that would discourage. So they have done not taking action. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I, I do think we're okay on that. Taking opposite action. Yes. Um, that, that, I'm very good at, at that not taking action <laughs> myself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take my. um, similarly, E4, and I think that should have said E5 next to it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Similarly, it's all the shall not discourage. So, uh, you know, maybe what we say is done to date on each of them, just so. There's no backsliding. Exactly, there's backsliding we get to. On E4, what, is, what does it mean to employ transportation demand management? Oh, well, I think with the medical office building, yeah, which no longer right. exists, uh, the idea would be that there would be, you know, incentives for carpooling and by oh. bicycling and other also uh, using the same okay. parking spaces because people would like not use residential parking spaces during the day but at night so mm -hmm. the 
office users would use the spaces during the day and the residential people could use the yeah. spaces at night. So you don't need a net amount of parking spaces, but that's relevant. Yeah, it's all, all out the window. Given, you know, <laughs> given the bright view shuttle buses, I bet yeah. that went pretty well in that regard, most likely. Mm -hmm. um, okay, moving on to uh, things beyond the uh, the subgroups, uh, 5B. Um, is talking about phase two, which is the um, study that we brought forward now. Um, so we're in process on that, and we just talked about it. So unless anyone has got on anything on that. Um, six is just a general um, statement that uh, it must be constructed in accordance with the LDA. Obviously, we've got our LDA matrix to fall back on with respect to that one. Um, Seven uh, is all construction activities must be carried out in conformance with the uh, declaration of restrictions. Um, and eight are kind of together, and frankly, I probably should have said check with DTR as well uh, on both of those. So um, that well, is. Well, the DTR receives it once it's done. So I think it's actually would be um, not. So the DTR is not monitoring the construction in MVP for the construction. The DTR signs the conservation easement, and then, and then it has jurisdiction on So that has now been circulated to do, but they wouldn't be reviewing the MVP. D the de designated town representative? Oh, oh I'm sorry. DTR, not DTR. No. No. No, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 this no, is clearly, just the, clearly DTR is. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah so it's a, uh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not looking for. EEOA to <laughs> get any more involved at this point, I don't think. So we're not saying that construction activities are completed. It's just as they are completed, yes. they're following it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that's okay. been what the DTR has been following the whole time. That's what that just means. Yeah, so just on that point, though, we now have temporary occupancy permits for all of the buildings. And this has come up with snack a little bit because um, there was a question, you know, we have to post our three-week look-aheads. Well, there's really... While there is punch list happening, um, it's not really scheduled work mm -hmm. or scope. So there really isn't anything on the construction side. Um, so we're in a transition period of wrapping up our, our permits. So we're not saying the construction is done, but, um, but active new construction, finishing buildings um, is done. And what, what we're in the process of is sort of tightening up all these, um, what we're talking about now, to make sure that everything's done correctly and then applying permanent certificate of occupancy, which then would close the loop on construction from a permit perspective with the building permits. That closes those permits. And um, and then we would obviously go through the, the LDA issues as well. Brightview is still yeah. under Yeah, but Brightview is still under construction, okay. but that's, um, you know, we would say is a different special permit. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we're not checking off Brightview on these conditions? No. No. Right no. Okay. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> Although some of these do benefit. There's some overlap. There's yeah. overlap. Yeah, there's infrastructure. There's the, 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 so obviously the CR the, installed. Um, there's one overlap issue where the, the sales trailer um, that Brightview has has some, um, the sidewalk could be blocked and made consistent with the road. There's a curb cut that's there now. Mm -hmm. And so there's it's right where there's going to be um, the handicap ramp. And then a new curb when that curb goes away when they're done and so that's one of the issues that we see as being a bond you know so everybody knows that it's going to happen and that Brightview will do that when they move into their new facility in a matter of months so, mm -hmm. so the, but that's a, an overlap area where we were required to do the sidewalk and the curbing as part of our permit and uh -huh. that's the one place where um, we're sort of finishing And has the designated town representative, and this is more of a question for Carol probably, kept track of the two Sorry, projects separately? Um, uh, separately, so Brightview and then Arlington 360, has, has the DTR looked at it as two sure different that. projects? Yeah, what I can say is that um, he's, we offered as part of this process to be a single point yeah, so that it wouldn't become confusing with you know people looking the other way and sort of finger pointing. Mm -hmm. So we said we would overview all of it for both projects. 
Um, and Brightview has been sort of integrating their compliance, and we've been presenting all of the information to SNAC as one project and trying to do it as much as possible for the board. Um, and so we will maintain doing that through the completion of their project. Um, in terms of sort of violations of early starts or noise or MVP kind of issues, um, he has he was integrating them all, and we've he's now separated okay. them so that they tie to one contract or one project and the other, and we're delineating that, and we're trying to negotiate the settlement of the um, Arlington 360s. Arlington 360s, and then there are other amounts that will be going and due to from Procon and uh, Shelter. So we've been coordinating it, and, and Rick has been looking at it as an overall project, same level of standards for the MPP as everything else, but it has been helpful to delineate who's delineate, you know, who's who created what problems and, and who's responsible for those. So on the most part it, it's worked out pretty well. But I, I would want I, you know I would expect us to have a better update from the designated town room um, for <clears throat> when it is that we're um, moving through these things in a little bit more official capacity. Mm -hmm. Has um, have you been getting reports, written reports? That's, we, we have. We've gotten recently, though, um, where everything's been summed up. Um, so, and we've been working through that as we're trying to get the contractors on board. Um, there's some timing questions that are who knew about what, when, and we're working through those things amongst the parties, mm -hmm. and um, we think that those will most of that stuff will resolve itself. Um, and that's where we are right now. So I would expect that in say two to three weeks, um, we would have the active issues with Arlington 360 sort of done. I think what we have been able to do is delineate between the two projects and the Procon um, issues won't be done, but they'll be understanding where they are um, and, and, and everybody will sort of know what their obligations are at that time and as long as they don't have any more problems. But if they do have more problems, they're gonna have to expand that list. So um, it's been a lot of work to do that, um, but it's coming together. We would like it to be done now, and that's what we're working on actively. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, nine is uh, mock-ups of materials. Let's see. That was a while back. Yeah, I even remember that. Um, next is landscaping must be consistent with proof of plan. Um, this this goes to the walkthrough, I think. Mm -hmm. But but essentially, we've switched this out with the buffer uh, zone enhancement plan. This is this is the thing that where we've gone with the buffer zone versus um, the delineation of the um, the different calipers, etc. Right, right. So, um, I, yeah. But I think mm -hmm. I think we've all seen that. Uh, the buffer zone. We have. It's just seeing that it's been installed. Exactly. So, and I mean that's another one where. You'd be getting an affidavit with uh, from yeah, it's part. It's been integrated with yeah. the landscape plan from okay. our perspective. So from your perspective, yeah. gonna, we're going to get the whole thing on that. You have one affidavit for everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The next one is the conservation easement, which I believe you want to give an update on. I think we're sure. Yeah. So this is this is this is another one we're we're right on it. We have um, talked to representatives of the CONCOM and the Land Trust, um, as well as SNAC in the neighborhood, um, to sort of further define the boundaries um, um, for the buffer zone and the open space. Um, and so that's been circulated to the operations groups at both Brightview and uh, Brightview Shelter and, um, and JAG. Arlington 360, just to make sure that there's no operational thing that nobody thought about, um, and it doesn't look like there is. Uh, so once that's done, um, we will be inserting that as an exhibit to an updated um, final CR document that Jonathan Book has been working on um, on behalf of the town, Ross and the ARB, and um, in our attorney, they've worked on the drafting of that to get it consistent and to tie it in with our um, condominium documents, so that all is fitting together, and um, I believe that document is very close to being done, and really it's just waiting for this exhibit, the legal description and the exhibit to be inserted into it. So our goal is to have the exhibit done and ready for survey to create a legal description this week, uh, to go in and have that done, 
and then we will insert the legal description and get that whole package into DCR for their final review and approval. DCR um, or EE? Well, whatever you call that. EEO. The other one. EEO, whatever it is. EEOA? Uh, yeah. uh, the state. <laughs> the state, exactly. <laughs> and um, we also want to be sensitive um, and in including the land trust and the CONCOM, which we've been trying to keep in sync um, with all of these matters um, so that we don't submit to the state and then have because the con the concom and the, and the land trust will be holding this easement, so they do need to see it and understand it. And we've been circulating it for them to do that. Um, whether they need formal approval or not, um, I'm not sure, but they certainly need to understand it. And if they have some objection to it, they should voice it along the way. So we feel that we've been trying to do that. We've been asking that they insert any comments that they have into Jonathan book for him to integrate all together from down to the town. So, um, like so it's said, gone to them already. To the ALT and to the I don't Concom. know that. That's been with Jonathan. I think yes. he may be waiting for well, the for the exhibit to go with it. Um, yeah, but we said go ahead and get that going. We just Friday. received yeah Friday on knows, Friday yeah. we just received I think it was Friday we just received from Jonathan an updated draft. Right. So um, so we're going through that now and I assume that the land trust has had their input already, but they may be reviewing okay. concurrently. I, I'm not sure about that. That'd be check with Jonathan. So Jonathan's in charge of circulating there's, right now. There's a lot of different right. groups on it. Yes, and uh, and Brian Rarig has been yes uh, well, taking a lead on that so on the town side. So uh, there are there's a daisy chain of sort of internal approvals within the town that we should just make sure that people are included in yeah. their feedback. I saw an email that Brian had sent to the concom that it wasn't quite ready yet for him okay. to come and present at their meeting. Okay. And he was asking when the meetings were in so January. So they may be asking us for you know, a sign off that everything looks fine before he does that. So it's the type of thing where no one wants to go first, yeah, everyone wants yeah. to be last. And <laughs> someone <laughs> else, including our you know, lender and all of our partners. But we'll get through it. We'll get through it. And, and that, that is a major milestone once it is recorded, because you will see that there's a number of mechanisms, uh, interrelated conditions in the LDA yeah. and the conditions of approval that really relate to that. Um, so when that recording does happen, um, there are some payments that go into escrow payments that go into place for funding different funds. Um, so you'll see those within the, the LDA. Um, and it ties to the condominium requirements and, and everything else. Um, it fits, slides right in with our, um, our condominium documents. So um, it's the last sort of collection of contracts and documents that, that need to go into place. So the CR easement, they get, it gets recorded concurrently with your master date and condominium documents, yeah. so yeah. Uh, they're in place with sort of priority over the... They, they uh, fit, and okay. I don't know if one goes first or... Okay. They, 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 they live together. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, with, respo with respect to uh, affordable, I think you saw from um, uh, Laura's, uh, uh, Laura's memo, her first line was the affordable housing has been, uh, has been satisfied at this time. Okay. So, uh, which brings us to 12, 13. Um, and I think, did you give us an update on progress on the affordable? Yeah, we've got through the lottery. Yeah, um, all of the eighty percent were you know taken. Most of the um, one twenty units, although there's still some empty one twenty units oh, um, that just didn't make it. We didn't have enough qualified applicants, so we are going through a leasing process. So if people come in and qualify. You know that'll be sort of a first come first serve basis. We'll work with Laura and, and the um, housing authority on, on on those requirements per the regulatory agreement. Um, um, but the, the people are moving in. Um, all the units are being occupied now, and it's just whenever people can move in and, and, and they're at least upcycle, um, we're, we're getting them cranked up. So it's, it's great to see warm bodies in the buildings at this point. And uh, great to have our, our first round of that occupants really kind of you know, jump up and get to a critical mass. How many of the non affordable units are occupied now? Uh, about 15. I like to call those market rate units. Not 
people. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking yeah. 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 what the term would be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Christine is not in charge of the market. Yeah. Exactly. And these are the rented units, right? Yes. Yes. None sold yet. No, none have closed. There's none some closed. are under agreement, prestige is agreement. Um, so on the last page, we've got certificate of occupancy shall be pro rata. They're all. All those certificates are, all the TCOs anyway, have been, uh, have been done, so it's certainly pro rata. Um, conservation management plan, we exhibit C, I think you need a recording of decisions. So I think that's one of those things that will fall. Yeah, that, that's been agreed place. to. It's actually been signed, but it's really it it because okay. it is an exhibit to mm -hmm. the right. CR. So once the CR is signed, then it kind of comes to Yeah, it comes to life. Yeah. Right, it's one of those documents. Um, yeah, so with respect to the contracts on the subcontractors, I think that's where I think that one's going the last one. So I think that's it's a special permit. Um, move on to the LDA. There's fewer of them here, but a few probably worth discussing. Um, the first thing is with respect to the $400,000 payment for the MOB parcel that was completed. Um, Park construction must be complete. Um, so, with respect to that, um, that's supposed to be for the um, final COs on the last five residential. Obviously, the parks are. Well, you want? Why don't you give an update on the parks? They're done. Historic signs are in. Um, I believe the final paving is in now in the Upper Vista Park, and um, planting has been done. Seeding has been done. Again. Do we have a full um, stand of grass? No, but that's more that's a punch list obligation that we have. So, um, you know, we really just need to have some kind of a contingency for that, and that we are going to hold back from our contractor as retainage to, to make sure that those things happen. So we're feeling pretty good that you know it's all it's all there. And I think came out great. I, I, I went up. I saw. I saw at least when I went. There was the one historical sign down at the lower vista. Mm -hmm. They look, they look really nice. Mm -hmm. I like them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't seen any signs yet. Yeah. I saw some of the ones. Have you opened up to the left now? So you can take all the the, the fence is gone. Um, so you yep. go all the way yep. around. Yep. Whole loop. Up, up go there. full loop. Yep. Oh great. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, next one is the marking for the twelve condo units. This has been kind of an ongoing thing. Um, late breaking news. I, I think I think where we are on the marketing for the 12 condo units, I think that date of June 22nd is probably going to change. I think that was a mistake. I think the ML, MLS um, listing was actually uploaded on June 11th, and I believe we'll get some documentation right now um, that the marketing will go through the spring season, which was very important to us. Um, and uh, at least at least through June 11th, mm -hmm. so which will be the 12 months for the MLS. So um, that's rather late breaking news. So once we get that paperwork done up, we'll uh, be able to show it to the board and you can check that one off the list. Um, payment of condo conversion incentive escrow. Um, with respect to that one, I think that escrow gets set up. Um, First residential CO, so I'm assuming that's the final CO. You're going to put that into escrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's for final CO. Or is it already in? Uh, Carol, yeah. No, no. Okay, so so that's at the time uh, of the I'm first sorry, unit three closing. We three A. Three B. Three B. Three B. The sixty thousand yes. for the incentive. That was made. That was made. Okay. How much was that done? Well, let me double check that. Let me okay. double check. Yeah, we staff and and. Staff you, Carol, you, you and Laura can maybe check in on that. Get us some information on that one. Have we had a final? Yes, that's that. Final? I'll, I'll double check it, but I'm pretty sure that that was done because we need to do that for the first CO. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I tend to remember TCO that we did that as well. On the TCO. Yeah, on the TCO. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure we did that on the TCO. We'll double check that. I'm pretty sure it's in there. Uh, minimum taxes. That's that's open, um, but it's 
probably going to remain open from the perspective of there's you know several years here, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know so I think I think what we'll do there is uh, talk to the town manager about that and how best to approach that one. Obviously, it has a lot to do with what the units are actually or what the yeah. properties are actually assessed I, for. I don't think we're going to have a problem with the the minimum. assessment came out. Yes. So. Yeah, so the assessment is 150,000 for well the second over. half of the year. Okay. Yeah, there's no problem there. Um, yeah. And, and I think that there's some perspectives, differing perspectives of how that assessment was calculated. But um, but I think that in terms of these, these, these numbers, um, I think it's safe to say that the town is ahead of plan. Yeah, there's good news there. there. Okay. In, that, in that we're, all of that has been moved up because we're not talking about the second half of 2014 anymore. We're talking about oh. now. Oh, we are essentially. This is the second half of 2014 right now. Oh, because because uh, it's our because it's fiscal. It's, yeah, it's sorry, January. Sorry, January. sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll go through that with how many. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, it's fiscal. Did they get redefined though in the LBA on fiscal? It clarified whether it was fiscal. We've known that there was a separation. It doesn't uh, matter in terms of the payment amount. So yep. Yeah, but, but just to it, make sure that yeah, we just, just just as we go through the other LPA. Um, I and I'd have to go back and check the the document, Jake. But I think that what got negotiated was the date by which the payment would need to be made in the event that. The assessment didn't rise to the level of those minimums, right. um, and so yeah. it wouldn't necessarily have to be paid by like February one, it'd be, or or May one. I think there was a little bit of a lag time, but, and, but like it's, I, it's I'm not 100 percent sure of an academic because right. I think yeah. it's a moot point because I think okay. we've met the minimum. Okay. Any issues? Um, yeah, but. Said that, Bruce. Given your familiarity with it, maybe I'll ask you with the okay. with the town manager at some point, just to make sure that we're. It's right in the letter, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes. This is the agreement. So, so yeah. Right. That's uh, sort of that right. letter amendment that we negotiated. Right. To I can the check on that. Yeah. 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 So that's in the town manager's list rather than our list. Um, record con CR. Um, obviously, we just talked about that. So I think we're uh, on the next page, the um, contribution to the Affordable Housing Trust on the 50th that has been done. Mm -hmm. Completion escrow uh, was posted on 1612. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, cost of the mon maintaining the monitoring wall has been done. Um, any plan review expenses, uh, Carol, you went back and checked and made sure that we were covered on all our costs. I think that you said that we were, is that correct? We haven't had any, we haven't right. filed any review costs. A lot of that but was. But the building um, permit is all set. Okay, so yeah, we paid a lot of those review costs as part of the building permit. Yep. So, yeah. Okay, so that was done. Uh, Fuzzy on the next one, which is the remediation fund agreement. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether, whether you can shed some light on what that one is. And what it's well, done when um, I guess this was probably at the time of the demolition uh, loan, if you will, um, because that's I think where Chicago Title is involved in assuring yeah, that lender. It, it goes before that even okay. because it basically the, the the broad brush is that when the town. Um, was negotiating the original land disposition agreement. Obviously, the hospital was still there, and there were AULs that were outstanding mm -hmm. for some um, piston fuel that had gotten into the, the ledge. There were some um, old oil tanks and stuff on site, and those things were in process of getting cleaned up. And people didn't anticipate that there were going to be major issues. However, there was environmental risk, and mm -hmm. so it actually was worked out very well, I think, for all parties because there was an escrow where I think three hundred thousand dollars were going to be held from the land payment. In, um, until the project was over, and if there were any in any issues, there were certain conditions that would allow us, or the developer, or the 
construction company to draw down on that if there were problems. It turned out that there were no problems, and um, so the town is, has all that money that was put aside. Okay. And I don't believe so there's a still release. Is there a release or anything? Yeah. Well, how do we yeah. get that out of there? We should check. Um, well, I think it's detailed actually here. Okay. And if we get to the point where the monitoring shows that it's not necessary to, well, it's just uh, for the LSP, the land site professional, uh, licensed site professional, determines that it's not necessary to use the money anymore, that trigger, he writes, he or she writes a letter. Uh, to Chicago Title, and uh, Chicago, Chicago Title cuts a so check to the town. Who is the LSP? Well, I'm trying to. Run, I believe. So can I, we get that letter? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I mean, think we so need. Carol, I think maybe we need to do a little legwork on that because it certainly sounds like a good idea to get the money released. Are you sure that's what it is, right? Nope, that's just one of the LSPs there. <laughs> there was a whole LSP party about this one, so there were a lot of different ones involved. But I think that that was the town's original one. That may have been Leahy's, though. They may have been representing Leahy. Yeah. But, um, Dick Cushions firm wrote the insurance policy with um, so maybe Chicago, we can help so if nothing else. Yeah, I can give Dick a call and ask if. Yeah, that'd be great. Because I mean, obviously, I, would, I actually looked at that one. I said, "Wait, you've got 300 k sitting there." So that comes back back into the, the town coffers. Town coffers. Likely. I don't know where the town manager goes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's worth doing. Uh, okay, next one is one of those uh, pins that needs to drop after the uh, CR is recorded which is the funding of the 10,000 uh, uh, management uh, for annual uh, inspections. Yeah, there's actually two. There's one for 30. There's a yeah, there's a, a, a stewards fund, uh, $30,000, and then an additional $10,000. Is it 30 on the other? Is it in the special it, permit? It but was on before. It was on one of them before, but I don't It's because there was an amendment to the LGA when Bright Green Shelter came in. The equation of that is an additional add. But we had it on the matrix yeah. on an earlier version. Yeah, someone, someone already the yeah. leader from the matrix, so we'll need to take it. Here it is. It was under, uh, right after the one that said Exhibit B. Oh. Environmental Remediation Fund, Exhibit B. Hmm. Yeah, there was a separate line. Uh, there's a uh, All right. There's a row missing right there, okay. right cool. above this one with the 10,000. And it said contribute funds to endow SIMS, contribute funds to endow 30,000 conservation funds. Huh. Do when CR is reported. I don't know why that came up. It probably just got hidden or something. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's take a look. I'll take a look. Is that from an older version? Yeah, I have an older version here. Okay. No, it says right here we don't need to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Insane. <laughs> yes. Feel free. Ryan's watching the house. No, Be careful. Oh, my God. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. As, our, as our chairman noted at the beginning of this, this is a working document. Exactly. <laughs> I believe I was abundantly clear on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Administrative error. Uh, by my Excel spreadsheet skills. Um, tree replacement program. So here we do have it as open uh, because, uh, and this has to do with the affidavit as well as uh, the lecture. And then uh, finally, forest management plan. It's been submitted, which I think is the requirement. Mm -hmm. So that is done. Okay. Anything else that the board has for questions, comments? So obviously, we'll get back on these different things. I think a few of us have some things to do. Some of us have to put things back into the matrix that some of it deleted. Uh, but otherwise, I think what what I'd like to do is just, as I said, it's a working document. Now that we've gone through it, if anyone has any questions for the next time or anything, please just, you know, keep up with Carol on all of those things. So one thing that I'd like, just to sort of in summary of what we're doing on our side, you know, as we complete the CR, as we uh, recording, as we, uh, in all the relationships there, as we get the bus stop done, um, 
there's uh, just double checking the condominium conversion fee um, payment. Um, as there's the completion bond that was put in place at the, clo at the land closing uh, or at the construction loan closing um, was uh, $100,000. Uh, I believe the ARB voted like last spring to sort of reconsider that amount this spring coming up. So what I think, I think it's helpful for everybody to sort of have a list of the things that can't be done that we, everybody agrees to and what it's going to cost, um, just to sort of a running list of those things because um, it was always anticipated that there would be some things you have to come back and do, like put the hydrothermal tape on the roads instead of just the paint. You know, there's some, some things like that that we can just inventory, but it's helpful, I think, to have the review of staff, including the town engineer, kind of check those and then get an, an escrow amount for those. And so I think that we'd like to present that. I think it'll help kind of jive with the conditions because some of those things are the conditions that aren't done, but there's a bond in place for that to happen, an agreement about what and when those things are going to happen so that hopefully we can get to a um, final certificate of occupancy, but knowing that these things are going to happen and then a second wave of releasing of that bond as those things kind of are done and burned off and it's clear that that scope is done. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm going to show my ignorance of, of one point here. Do we have two performance bonds or only one performance bond between Shelter and Darlington 360? I believe we have two. One for each? Yes. Okay, I guess, uh, so anyone because else have any comments? Because I mean, I guess I, I would need to know that before I kind of committed to you whether we'd be in a position to do sure, something. Right. I think the list makes perfect sense regardless. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think we need to do it. and it, That's that's exactly the reason for doing all right. of this. So the reason why I bring it up is that I think it's just good for everybody to be aware that we're going to do that and then that's something that we work with staff yes. on you yeah. know, kind of what that list is, how it relates to these things, what those amounts, the proper amounts are, and when we expect them to be, that, that scope of work to be done. We need that comfort level regardless, yeah. I yeah. think. Yeah. And then with respect to the bond itself, I think we need to understand. And I don't, do you remember whether there's one bond or two? I, guess I, I can't one. remember. I, for, for, for the life of me, I thought there was only one. And, and obviously, if there is only one, then you know that would be a harder task right. Um, right. with respect so to that. So let's look at the shelter special permit. There's only one land disposition agreement. I believe it is in the land disposition agreement. Right. So you may be correct there. Um, and we just got to double check that there's any conditions that ran parallel with that that correct. go to their special permit. So let's verify that. Um, and then and then I think that if that is the case, then the issue will be, are there bonds that are necessary for them for their scope of work that is the completion? Um, I believe that all of the infrastructure, the roads, the sidewalks, other than the sidewalks that are right on their property line, which I would say would be part of their special permit, mm -hmm. um, of which they're already done. <laughs> um, there's just some curbing on the entrances and things like that to, to go. So I think it should be fairly clear that you know we've done everything outside of their mm -hmm. their special permit scope. So I think on that stage, you know, let's track it, let's understand it, but it, I think it'll kind of come in line with, with what we have anyway with the responsibilities for because I think we have the responsibilities for everything else. Mm -hmm. Is this performance bond the same as 9C, the escrow for 100000 Yes. Yeah. Escrow 100000 yeah. at closing and yep. construction financing? Yep, yep. exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing. Okay. Completion, completion bond. And what you're talking about is just like a monetized punch list. Yeah. Right? So that we know what, we're what value. Right. Right, and if, the, uh, if it's over hundred thousand dollars, you gotta say, well, we gotta have more than hundred thousand dollars. It's under hundred thousand dollars, you know. We right. should be able to work it out um, for a partial release of that, and, and like then have it draw down as as everything's done mm -hmm. with the schedule. Anything else? So, who's cool. checking if there's two performance bonds or not? Mm -hmm. Carol. Mm -hmm. check that. I do have a feeling. Thanks, I think. I do have one question. Yeah. Do, are we going to have a list like this for Brightview? Do we need yeah, one we'll, we'll for their special to, we'll permit? We'll have to go through with the special permit. That'll be a totally think. another list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. Well, less lengthy. Yeah. No affordable. No. A whole bunch of other things. So. I just wanted to thank you, Mike, for coming up with the idea for the matrix and for Carol oh, and Laura to idea. put in all the mm. work to fill in the blanks because this is a great tool for looking at it. Thank you. 
my colleague was recruited. Well, project. I can yeah, the, the, it, it was a team effort to say the least. So, and, uh, and, and I will say Arlington 360 has been helpful in helping us identify the different things as they're being done as well. So from that perspective, thanks, Jake. And of course, thank you, thank you very much, Carol, because Carol and Mark put in a ton of like, work on this. So thank you. Back at you. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, that one's done. Thank you. Um, and I think we're actually doing very well on time. Well, not as well as any of us had hoped. Uh, we're getting out even earlier. But uh, but anyway, we're at least on time. So uh, thanks, Jake. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Friday, 8 o'clock? Perfect. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is the proposed submission of warrant articles to amend zoning bylaws for medical marijuana treatment centers. So I want to give a little bit of a uh, preliminary uh, bit on this. So this is in no way the recommendations of the board. This is in no way um, anything other than making sure that we put a placeholder in the warrant article. Uh, as you might recall, last year during town meeting, um, town meeting, we presented two different articles uh, to, uh, I'm sorry, we didn't present them. The Board of Selectmen um, put in the warrant two different articles, one of which was a zoning article, um, much like the one that's in front of us. And then the other one was a moratorium for a year. As you might recall, uh, we made a rec certain re re recommendation uh, with respect to the zoning article, as well as the moratorium. Um, the zoning article was not passed. The moratorium was. So right now, there has been no zoning passed with respect to medical marijuana treatment centers. So uh, this year, as we said at the last town meeting, um, the notion was is that we would uh, pick up the zoning question uh, when we had everyone wanted the moratorium so that we could get better information, understand how other towns were dealing with it, etc. And uh, so that's the process that the town will be in between now and town meeting, is coming up with those uh, notions and presenting something to town meeting. What we're talking about here is the article that would go into the warrant and it would come from the Arlington Redevelopment Board rather than um, the selectmen. Uh, I, I would suggest that we be the ones who request it going into the, uh, going into the warrant. It is zoning. It is in our purview. As we said at the beginning of the master plan process, we were going to look to zoning articles or look to not um, go too far with zoning articles given the master plan process. We wanted that to go through its process before we put anything else in place. So obviously though, this is extenuating circumstances given the, um, the, the law that was passed, uh, the referendum that was passed and the different regs that have followed. So as that is the background, this isn't a public hearing on the zoning bylaw um, uh, warrant articles. It's not anything with respect to recommended actions or anything else. It's just what should we put in or what should we submit as the, well, should we submit and what should we submit as far as the warrant articles are concerned. So before you are two different warrant articles. One is with respect to the siting of medical marijuana treatment centers. The other one is with respect to signage of medical marijuana treatment centers. Is it possible for me to that? Oh, sure. Just one of, one of each of these is the two different types. Okay. So, with respect to the siting of medical marijuana treatment centers, um, I would expect that there will be discussions with the Board of Health the, um, who are going through the different state regulations right now and coming up with their own, um, as well as uh, the Chief of Police with the uh, Zoning Enforcement Officer, uh, Carol, um, myself, 
there'll be discussions with respect to um, certain recommendations. Once again, that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is simply putting a warrant article in, just giving the authority for town meeting to act on zoning, one way or the other. Um, and so before you is an article that will be numbered by the selectmen, uh, and that article uh, in its draft form right here says, to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaws to govern the use of land and buildings within the town for medical, medical marijuana treatment centers, hard for me to say, as defined in Chapter 369 of the Acts of 2012, adopted through the state initiative petition process in November 2012, or take any action related thereto, inserted at the request of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, the one thing I will say that's kind of interesting, but I think it's fine, um, is we actually had a different title at first than what was in the Warren article itself. In the regs, they actually talk it, uh, they actually call it a uh, medical marijuana dispensary, I believe. Um, and we just tried to be consistent with the two. So I think we're okay with respect to how it's phrased. So in the, in the actual act, it's a medical marijuana treatment center. In the regs, for some reason, they've gone with a dispensary, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, so the one thing I will say is I just want to double check with town council with respect to simply mm -hmm. naming conventions and making sure that we don't knock ourselves out of the box mm -hmm. um, with respect to the regs or the you know, law. Maybe we'll even do a slash or something like that. But I, I do want to mention that right up front, that there might be some wording changes, if we decide to go with this, there might be some wording changes with respect to that that I just want to, I sure. might ask your your indulgence to be able to make that uh, change with town council if need be. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that we don't go out of scope for any reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the RMD designation? That's the phrase that's used in the regulations. Um, ah, there it is, regulated medical, regulated, registered. registered. Oh, okay. That's the RMD. Sorry, that's that's the one. Registered marijuana, marijuana dispensary. dispensary. That's it. Registered. Okay. So you might see that come up in this. Thank you. Okay, I meant to look it up in that. Yeah, exactly. Sure exactly, it is. Oh yeah. yeah. And then some. Um, any any discussion or anything with respect to this? Well, I certainly understand, you know, why, you know, the background that you're giving about this being a warrant article placeholder, why you want to keep this as kind of broad and general as possible, because we're going to get that, the detail yes. from that conversation that we're going to have with the health department and the chief of police and uh, town manager and, and others. Um, so. I, I think, you know, at first glance when you see this, you go, boy, it's kind of open-ended. It, it kind of has to be because uh, the, the detail is, is coming later. Correct. And that detail right. will then show up in the language of the vote. The right, vote. in the recommended vote. And obviously that will be what we have a public hearing about. Mm -hmm. March 3rd. We'll, March 3rd, we'll be having a public hearing with respect to whatever the language is, mm -hmm. that, is that is proposed to the board. And this is language referring to what zone yes. is allowed. Yes, what district. Yes, what if, district. if that's what's decided or whatever mm -hmm. else. Yes. That Does it need to be one zone only? No. No. No, it can be. Okay. No, it can and that's, be more than one zoning district. Yeah. Um, I have a question, though, just, yep. uh, and this is a really minor thing. Or it says zoning bylaws, plural. Yeah, it's, it's probably it's should be to amend the uh, zoning bylaws, yeah. singular. I think that's right. In, in both uh, articles. Yeah, I want to get to the. I have different thoughts on the next article. So. Any any other comments or questions? So, um, what I'd like to do is, uh, I, well, I, I would I'd, I'd entertain a motion mm -hmm. um, to um, approve the submission of this warrant article to the Board of Selectmen for inclusion in the 2014 town meeting warrant. 
uh, I would uh, so move and uh, with the provision that the chair may uh, rephrase as needed the reference to medical marijuana treatment centers to also cover a registered marijuana dispensary. Thank you. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Are you okay, Carol? Yeah, I'm just getting the condition. Yeah. That was the condition that the chair may um, alter the title to. Uh, can we have the chair or the director? The chair or the director. Okay. I'll be glad to. Yeah. Um, to include uh, registered marijuana dispensaries, okay. uh, either in addition to or in lieu of if, medical marijuana if treatment centers yeah. as necessary. As yeah. Needed. Yeah. If, we, if they get comfortable with it. Um, so we do have a second from Christine. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 That was unanimous. Okay. So the second article is a little different. Um, and this is with respect to um, submitting an article with respect to um, signage uh, for medical marijuana treatment centers. Um, this was first proposed, I think, before we understood what kind of requirements what there were under state, um, the state regs, which is why I sent along, uh, I'm sorry, which is why Carol, I should say, sent along the advertising requirements, marketing and advertising requirements that are under the uh, state regs uh, that have been proposed. Um, so the article that you have before you says, um, Zoning bylaw amendment signage for medical marijuana treatment center sites. Uh, sorry, treatment sites. To see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw to govern signage of land and buildings used as medical marijuana treatment centers, as defined in Chapter 369 of the Acts of 2012, adopted through the state initiative petition process in November 2012, or take any action related thereto. So, as I mentioned, when we we're first talking about submission of an article. We thought it good to have kind of two, one for um, citing, another one for signage. And then we realized that there was quite a bit of requirements under the state law. And although we could go further, and I think it's a good topic for conversation for us, um, then the question is, is do we really need to submit this article given what's over here and given the fact that you know, it, it obviously raises questions about, you know, signage for one particular use, et cetera, versus, versus other uses, et cetera. So, um, so I'll, I'll open it up to anyone who might have any kind of comments or questions or anything else, and then I can give you my opinion on it. Um, I don't have an opinion yet about whether or not we need a second article, but I would recommend that we include an article in the warrant um, because you can always um, uh, not bring it to the floor no, right. It's, it's, right so you know that way we're at least keeping um, the door open to have a set of signage regulation in place if we see that it's necessary if the, if the state regs don't address everything that we're that we might be concerned about now, the state regs under item two say that it shall comply with local requirements regarding signage. Right. So. So if we didn't do anything special, it would be. We still to have the, to comply. Comply with, with the our signage, signage bylaw. Bylaw. Correct. So we're talking about maybe doing something special. Correct. Right. Correct. This would be something special specifically mm -hmm. for this use. Any other? So my own opinion on it is, is after rethinking it, I'm not sure, I guess my concern is after seeing the different things that are in here and reading through them and getting comfortable with them, I'm, my own personal view is, is I'm a little bit concerned with even a no action vote on a, on a signage um, article that there would be, it would, it would possibly 
um, be too distracting mm -hmm. uh, with respect to um, the task at hand. And I guess that's my, my concern, is that, you know, with respect to First Amendment, et cetera, and all the things that might come up with respect to zoning signage for one use, mm -hmm. that it might be, you know, a distraction to the bylaw with respect to siting and having good town-wide conversation around the siting uh, bylaw. And that we, and, and, and frankly, I, I guess I'm fairly comfortable with this and so I, I think I've changed my mind since okay. I first <laughs> since I first uh, thought of of having two articles so um, that's my own opinion I, I don't know if anyone else Carol let me know if you have, a, if you have anything I would only add that the um, regulations go much farther than the um, than you can go in zoning the public health, the state public health regulations go farther than zoning can. So, than zoning could ever allow, you mean? The zoning can't talk about content. Mm -hmm. These regulations okay. yeah. do and can, but since they're more restrictive than zoning could be, and, and I don't know if we even have the basis for separate signage for a single use. Yeah. I can't think of another instance in our bylaw, and I don't know if it would stand. I don't. I don't and I'm just concerned. Stand. I mean, given all of that and the fact that it is, we you could end up spending a lot of time yeah. discussing. Even on a no action, really someone important could put in a substitute. Hard. Mm -hmm. The really important effort is to get them cited in a zoning district or two or more. Yeah. Yeah. That's the through that conversation with town meeting yeah. and the public hearing. If our department of um, public health, if the Arlington Department of Board of Health that, uh, wanted to, they could adopt some regulations that with, with probably greater latitude than zoning could. So let's say we cite them. It passes, the zoning bylaw amendment passes to cite uh, the dispensaries. In a year or two, you, you could conceivably have the um, Board of Health adopt additional signing regulations for this use, whereas zoning couldn't. Right. Or we could get another crack at it in a year's time if we've True. decided that that's not that it, that that there is something maybe that we can do that we just uh, yeah. didn't see uh, before. So I I have kind of come around on this. I wanted to still present it to the board because uh, you know uh, obviously, but but from my perspective, I'm a little bit concerned that we'll get a little bit distracted and, and won't do the good work that needs to be done with respect to the the dispensaries themselves. The, the state requirements have to be met, correct? Yes. Okay. And they are pretty comprehensive, yeah. it appears. I tend to agree with you. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't think we need to have any action if, uh, uh, Bruce, any other further comment or? No, I didn't, you know, I haven't had a chance to review oh, the yeah. state uh, requirements, so, you know, I'll uh, do. Uh, I'll defer to your yeah, opinion on I, that, Mike. I, I think that, that, that you feel that it's good. Yeah, and I, I wasn't trying to like set us up to then like knock us down, so I apologize mm -hmm. for getting it's that okay. to you so late. Um, but um, but I didn't. If if someone felt very strongly about it, I guess I'd, I'd have a different opinion. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it is it is the type of thing where um, I do get concerned about sure. how it's approached. Yeah. So, um, okay. So I think that's it on the uh, on the warrant. So, um, yes. um, okay. So next thing on it is the uh, on the, the agenda is the release of funds from escrow relating to the engineering plans for Jason Street, Mass Ave, Mill Street improvements. Carol, can you? Uh, this is with respect to Lara's. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, it's Laura's um, the, uh, memo. Right, Janu uh, another January 8th memo from Laura. Um, <laughs> yeah, I found and, another one. And this is a request to release $50,000 of the, from the escrow, from CVS. Five. Five thousand. Five thousand, thank you. <laughs> Five thousand of the fifty thousand 
for the um, some engineering to begin to implement the concept that was presented to you by Jeff Max Studis and Ed Starr uh, a few months ago for fixing the in intersection at Jason Mass and those streets. I would agree. I have no problem with this. I have no problem with it. Very yeah. no problem. Andy? Uh, I haven't read the scope, but... It's only one piece of the scope, too, Andy. It's just that one line that's bracketed. Yeah. Phase that's two page, traffic signal, traffic design. signal design. Yeah, I read it and was thinking, is this the whole thing? <laughs> so four to six weeks, $5,000 lump sum? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's and only that they, one. What do they produce for that? The traffic signal design, which would tell you what traffic signal each tr traffic direction would see and how they work together. So it's not an analysis anymore, it's a physical engineering study. That's right. And it's part of all this other stuff that's also being done. That's right. Correct? Yeah. It's only, this is the only thing that's coming out of the extra. Are these other tests also time. being Currently. done yeah. eventually? Are they out of the 52? Yes, they are. They would be. We said that 6,500 has already been used. So the total. Oh, that was for the. Uh, for public safety upgrades. The, what was that called? The. Optifon. Thank you. Optifon. So yeah. all of this stuff, 9,500. How did we skip to phase two from what happened to phase one? The recommendations and conceptual plan. That's a good question. Well, I thought that was out of somebody else's yes. scope and escrow. I, the I, think, yeah. I think Christine's correct because the the overall project that they're looking at is running from Shuler Court to Spangler Way. Way. Yeah. And the special permit for CBS doesn't ah, cover those. Okay. The, uh, right. the CBS special permit only related gotcha. to the Mill Street Jason Mass Ave intersection. So what the a um, uh, consultant has done on page that's number six uh, is just try to break out which portion of their overall project specifically is applies to, to this particular escrow. Yeah, that's exactly how I read it. Okay. Where, where's page six? Uh, it's uh, the one with the table. Th there aren't six pages, but there's oh, a little okay. six at the <laughs> bottom. So we didn't get the rest of the, yeah. the scope, the detailed scope. So remind me of what the TAC recommended for the use of these funds overall. Uh, I can help with that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah. So um, it would have, uh, it would narrow the island on Jason Street, so you have two turning lanes. Right, I remember that. And um, there would be a right turn only lane, if I remember there, and then the left lane would be either straight or left. Right, that's um, on the uh, going from Going north from Jason, Jason yeah. as you approach Mass Ave, going right in a northerly right. direction, and then coming from Mill Street in a southerly direction, there they've got a left turn oh, lane yeah. only, and then a straight ahead or right turn lane. Right. Um, so adjustment of those two islands on either yeah. side. Then there's also going to be uh, the synchronization of the lights such that um, there's, I, I think, only uh, Mill Street goes, so there's no oncoming traffic from Jason. Right. Then only Jason, so there's no oncoming right, right, traffic right. from Mill. And then I think there's also a little bit of a delay in, right, for pedestrian that, yeah. crossing. And yeah, I think I think Andy's also wondering what a, what else is going to go. Well, I, I'm just wondering what the master plan for the for the, for the whole a, for the whole. In other words, that we're going to analyze all this and build it for 50. I think so. I think so. I think that's the idea. So are we taking more than we should for the analysis, or are they kind of no, I think they budgeted that in? I think they've budgeted, I'd as like I to recall. Know. Well, this is this 5,000 wouldn't go to analysis. This would go to actual engineering drawings. Engineering drawings for construction. For implementing the traffic signal change and the um, median change in the... Including the lines. median design? Yeah. I believe so. Traffic signal design. Let me look at the scope. You would say they're going to actually design the islands too. Additionally detailed design drawings for traffic signal improvements at intersections. 
maybe it so does. Maybe it doesn't include the design maybe, scope or, of work at this intersection. Or maybe it does. If you look at the email from Wayne to Laura, yeah, we would like to request 5000 for. Where's it say? Go ahead. I can't see the Hi, Laura one. Yeah, the second paragraph. We would like to request the 5000 from the CBS escrow account be released, approved, to be utilized for design scope of work at this intersection. Okay. So so just I, the design. Yeah, but, 5, but what I'm saying is design scope of work to do all the work, not just design well, lights. It, says, it goes on to say, excuse me, the remaining funds will eventually be utilized to update the controls and signal heads and mm -hmm. institute the intersection design changes. So I, the remaining funds would Yeah, be I think Andy just wants to, I think, I think the one question that might be open is if you look at the Green International, it says, Mass Ave and recommends improvements to the roadway striping, traffic signal operations, and pedestrian crosswalks. I guess the only question there is: is should should they have also put in there um, the islands? Right. Right. Design the whole thing. Yeah. And now we have five. Now we have forty-five thousand dollars left. I mean, I'm not a little less I'm minus six minus sixty-five hundred. Yeah. Why sixty-five? Because that's what we use for the Opticom. Oh, that came out of it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we'll have thirty-nine five. So I don't know if it's been planned that way or if it's just somehow the funds are going to arrive. You know what I'm saying? I'm wondering. Yeah. Do, is, that, is that a kind of a thought out package to get all the work done or are we just kind of nipping away at it? I think we're nipping at it a little bit. I, I think could, you could bring they, up a good point, which is let's make sure the scope of work includes the full design if that's or, what it's supposed to be. Or include. at least there's a plan. Or so there's a plan if it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that's where it, that's worth checking on. I'd like to know that. Um, it's probably an answer that we can get. If we just ask the town of mm -hmm. Wayne. But if we get the answer we want, can we approve it conditionally? I guess is the question. Well, I don't know what answer we want because are they going to? Are we going to say? I mean, it sounds like it's work that needs to be done. I guess I'm just trying to see the whole picture before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think if you were to ask the engineer, my guess is what he would say is, it's going to cost what it costs, and we'll use the 50000 to the extent it will cover it. Yeah. My guess is is that if it that's doesn't, not, that's then... That's not the greatest way to do business. I don't disagree, but I'm <laughs> guessing that it happens. So, um, I've heard of that, yeah. I wish I could do business that Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it costs what it costs. If you have no, it. well, I guess, you can yeah. Build it. yeah. That's the way engineers do business. Because it, it's coming from town engineer. It's to the town engineer, so the town engineer has vetted this proposal. Correct. Mm -hmm. Which and, and the town engineer is the one that's requesting the money in order to pay for this. Right. Which that's that's good. That's a good thing. Well, I don't know what you guys want to do, but I'd like I, if you want to vote on it, fine. But I'd like to hear about what the full picture is at the next meeting. Can I ask for clarification? Um, you're you're interested in the full picture of the plan from Mass Ave for the state from Peg Spangler Way to no, Tulip no, Court, I'm asking no. for or the, just no. for the, the fifty is the fifty k going to cover all of the expenses of the that need to happen? Okay, just for, for our interest in the for, right. for, for, for what is what was fifty was it now kind of scoped, which was for the intersection, right? Because right right now we're down to forty three five, right? right? With the uh, with the Opticon. Yeah, with the Opticon. And if it isn't, just just tell us. I think we just need to know because we're kind of responsible for the distribution. And so, okay, do we have to raise more money to finish the work, or so what, what's the story? There must be thought into that, and I think it's worth knowing how it all plays out at the end. So basically, you want to know if is there enough? Will there be enough money left over to, to, to finish it? Yeah, to actually. Well, the corollary: What is your plan for the full use of the? <laughs> what is your plan, plan for, for the, the full use, of, use or for of for the use of the money? What and will you be using all of them? In other words, do you? It's both. Both things are equally good. We want to see a complete budget for the yeah. project. Right. Complete yeah. budget for the project. And he may have it. He may not. Yeah. My only concern is I think our next meeting is February 3rd, I'm a little bit. You want to let it go? I'm, well, no, I'm a little bit concerned about timing. I don't, I, mean, I know this is, I don't know whether Wayne wants to move on this right away or, or you know, how long this. 
estimate is good for, et cetera. So we're not Carol. having a January 27th meeting. Is that on our list? Wait, it was a maybe, as today was a maybe. Well, it was going to be today or the 6th. So we can talk about that at the end, but maybe we can talk about it now because I, I've got a problem with February 3rd, so I don't think I'm going to be here on February 3rd. This, this meeting when the selectmen don't has not worked out as too well so far. So. <laughs> Mike, I'd be willing. I, this sentence, the remaining funds will eventually be utilized to update the control signal heads and institute the intersection. Right, which would include that. Yeah. So I guess, I, I, I mean, guess depending on, but it would be nice to have a budget or, or a basic game plan for that because I'd hate to not know about it going into this. But I don't think there's much choice. Assuming he's worked his way yeah. to the best possible engineering fees, made a good decision, which I'm sure he has. Yeah, and I, I, I you tell me, but does he need the engineering drawings to, to oh, do yeah. those, to do that budget to begin with? So maybe, is there a chicken and egg problem here, you know? Does he need the engineering? No, he's uh, Does he need this $5,000 in order to get to a place where he can actually come up with a correct budget? No, no really. this this is no. actually the, okay. I, I don't. I this mean, is the construction. He already drawings. knows kind of what he wants to do. This how much the island drawings. would cost? Okay. How much the paintings would cost? Okay. How much it would cost to adjust the signals? He would have an idea. Yeah. I would think of the construction. And I think he did shorthand it in that one phrase. Yeah. So if yeah. you could just, I mean, I would vote on it if you want tonight, and Carol could just confirm that for the board that. Yeah, I think they've, they've got an overall. Maybe budget. you could tell Wayne about our concern with respect to you know that. We use this money in an efficient way to be able to do everything. Mm -hmm. We hope that that's the case. And mm -hmm. if we can't, then I think we'd like to understand. We'd like to know, yeah. Yeah. Then, then we'd at least be able to understand what he feels are the priorities. Exactly. That's a great That's a great point. As we did with the Opticon. That was a priority, so we did it. So I think with all of that as background, I think that is more background that Carol will kind of give to we, uh, to the engineer, uh, with the town engineer with respect to, you know, concerns. But I think we still come back to approving the $5,000 for the study, if I'm not mistaken. Correct? Mm -hmm. So I think we should I'll entertain a, a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve nice. the $5,000 uh, from, be paid from the CBS escrow account, or be released uh, for the design scope of work outlined in the town engineer's request and the proposal to him. That's, that works. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, think, I think you're good. I think, I think you're good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Both the email and the... Yeah. yeah. Seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Carol, let me know when you're... Our last agenda item is we've got the, uh, some draft minutes from December 16th. Our last minute. Um, Bruce? Okay. Um, I sent to Carol a red line copy of this, so she already has these added, so I'll just walk through what I picked up and um, we can talk about it. Um, in the uh, above the, the line uh, at the top of the page, there's just a misspelling of absent, so um, yeah. we I switched the letters on that. Um, the third line down, I guess this is a little bit of a matter of style, but where uh, throughout the, uh, the the notes where it refers to Millbrook District, I would capitalize district. Um, doesn't have to be, but I, I think that makes sense. Then in the fifth line, um, the sentence that begins benefits of an area bounded by the Millbrook, I said centered on the Millbrook and bounded by Massachusetts Avenue and the Minuteman bikeway for the capital B for bikeway. Um, after, ooh, what's that, about two more lines down, um, the sentence that begins Master Plan Advisory Committee Chair, and then I just identified Charles Kalauskas uh, as the chair. Um, the rest of the sentence is fine. Uh, again, Millbrook District, capitalizing the D. Um, next paragraph before Harris Band, I just uh, inserted Master Plan Advisory Committee member, 
Harris Band. Um, halfway through that paragraph in the fourth line, um, where it picks up by talking about use of the phrase DNA, three strands of Mass Ave, the former rail line, and the brook, um, I, I think it flows better to say creates instead of do create. Um, third paragraph, um, slight change here to say that Mr. West and Mr. Fitzsimmons added that similar to the high line, and I believe that's spelled H-I-G-H line, in New York City, comma, the Millbrook District was always there all the time. Next, uh, second line after that, uh, towards the right-hand margin, I'm capitalizing the first letters in master plan, and then skipping down to the fifth paragraph, it starts off, Mr. Band added that, and I inserted the words, the area between Mass Ave, et cetera. That was it. Thanks, Bruce. You're welcome. Christine? Uh, no, I have nothing else to add to that. <laughs> that was plenty. I think that pretty much covers it. I had written uh, something to you, Carol, which is just adding a sentence in there in the second paragraph, which was, I think I remember, um, I think it was Annie LeRoyer said that the name uh, Mill District should be, it should include the word Brook, and she suggested that Mill Brook District was a one word, and the other person, could have been her as well, said maybe use the word Corridor. So two suggestions were Mill Brook District or Mill Brook Corridor. Yeah. I think I've got it in somewhere. I, I sent that to you, but you yeah, know. I've got it right here. And I actually think those are interesting ideas. And maybe we'll talk about yeah. it um, the only other thing I have, uh, Carol, is just because you were talking about it in the second to last paragraph there, where you say at the January 6th meeting. I think we said at the January 6th, 413. Four thirteen meeting because we were kind of debating whether we were going to have a meeting on the 6th or the 13th. Um, all the way down at the bottom. On the second page? First page. Oh. Sorry. First That's page. Okay. Second to last paragraph on the first page. Very bottom of that paragraph, January 6th. 6 or 4 13. 13. Okay. I think we'll do the trick. And that's all I have. Um, motion to approve. I move to approve as amended. Um, a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Oops, one abstention? Okay. Now, we've got... Did we do the December 2nd at a different meeting? I don't know why I still have these. Oh, was that one? I think Carol had sent these a lot earlier. Yeah. You want to do these at the next meeting? Yeah, Did Carol, we are expecting to... Yeah, I'm not sure what it would do we do this? One second, I can check. I, maybe we did them at the last meeting. I see that we approved minutes of something at the last. Move to approve the minutes of the December 6th meeting. Now, this is December 2nd. Did we have a December 6th? Uh, that, you know what? That might be another correction. <laughs> that should just be December maybe, 2nd. Maybe this was, okay. Yeah, that so maybe be, we already did these. Yeah, we did those. Okay. But, so Carol, on, on the December 16th minutes? Uh -huh. <laughs> December 2nd should be, I'm sorry, December 6th should be December 2nd. Good catch. What? Accidental catch. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Mother, I'm actually behind the times a little. <laughs> so we actually we actually have on the agenda that we're going to adjourn the meeting, but I don't think that is I have one correct. more comment, though, before oh, we okay. do that. Um, I wanted to urge attendance at the uh, January 16th presentation. Okay. which is the Thursday um, for the Master Plan Advisory okay. Committee on the Land Use Working Paper. Everybody should have um, gotten yeah. an emailed copy. Carol has a few colored copies, if anybody needs a copy. Okay. Um, there's a map associated okay. with it in an appendix. What time is that? Seven. Seven, thank you. And there, you can make comments on that until January 31st, I think it was? Yes. Is that the And I would urge you all to make comments it also. Is. It's at the uh, bottom yeah, floor. Okay. You come in the bottom doors the off to the right room, or, in, the, yeah. in the last room. Yeah, oh, mural okay. room. You should also consider attending the January 27th Arlington Land Trust meeting. Uh -huh. That's um, going to 
highlight the Community Preservation Act. Oh, really? What we're missing out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. an important one. Uh, what day is that? That's Monday. Wait. Yeah, January 27th. Is it a Monday? Uh, no, don't quote me on that. Great. I have it on my. What's going on this month? Do you have a date? Yeah, I have it in my. That's my calendar. In my phone, yeah. I think. I know it conflicts with another meeting of mine, but I'm trying to get out of my other meeting, so I can't okay. remember whether it's A or B. So, actually, before we, I guess we can talk about if we continue. 28th. Uh, but, uh, the 28th? Oh, wait, no, that's you. That's that sorry. Doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold, on. Hold on. I'd enjoy the. Well, while you're doing that, um, with respect to the next meeting, um, so right now, I believe we're scheduled for February 3rd. I, I think I won't be able to attend that meeting, which is fine. Um, but I didn't know whether there was any preference for, we did mention a January 27th, but I mean, if people are fine with February 3rd, then we can go ahead with that. It makes no difference to me, but you know, we had discussed it, so I didn't want to, if people were expecting January 27th, I didn't want anyone to be surprised. Anybody have strong feelings? Do we have to do anything by January 27th? I guess no. we're only talking about that momentarily with respect to the item about the five thousand dollar release from escrow, but which is not necessary. So Correct. But the yeah. other the other place that that would have been important was with respect to submission of warrant articles, mm -hmm. um, because I think the warrant closes on the twenty seventh, thirty first. So the thirty oh it does the thirty first. That's yeah. what it was. It was the thirty first. So if we needed to, uh, if we hadn't done it, mm -hmm. we would have had to have okay. we would have had to move that up. So, but that's been done. So I don't I don't think that there's any, any concern there. So, um, so we'll keep the third thing. And uh, okay. if for any reason something comes up and we do feel that we need to submit a warrant article or something like that, okay. then uh, then Carol will be in touch on that. Okay. Great. And I don't have the land trust date in my calendar. I thought I did. I can get it from getting the website. Up. Okay. The twenty seventh. Well, it is the twenty seventh. Seven it's to the nine. Okay, so now we're free. So. Seven to nine p.m. That actually, be? so that, that's, that's actually a good reason center. not to meet on the 27th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is, um, I think I'll entertain a motion to continue the meeting. Um, we are heading over to Trust to have a, uh, a holiday toast, uh, as it were, uh, with the board and uh, anyone else who can make it. So. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I think we'll do it.